In this lesson, we'll examine the strategy for handling data interpretation questions. Now, when you encounter a data interpretation question, the first step is to examine the given data to understand the big picture. In other words, take the time to learn what story the information is telling you. Now, the goal here is to get a general feeling of the big picture. So don't spend more than 10 to 15 seconds on this task. Now, while examining the data, there are some specific things to watch out for. First, be sure to read any text that may accompany the data. In some cases, this text explains crucial aspects of the given information. You should also pay close attention to the units of measurement used. For graphics that have axes, carefully read the axis labels and determine whether each axis begins at zero or some other number. On a similar note, determine whether the values increase at constant intervals or in some other manner. Also, as you examine the given data, see if you can identify possible trends and relationships. For example, does the data spike at some point? Does it level out? Is there a cyclical nature to the data? And so on. Also, does one factor seem to influence another factor? For example, it may be the case that as one value increases, the other value decreases. Alright, so those are some things to watch out for as you try to understand the story that the information tells. As I said, you should not spend more than 10 to 15 seconds on this step. The step is merely intended to provide enough context to help you understand the questions that accompany the information. This brings us to our next step. Once you have a general idea of the data's big picture, your next step is to carefully read the question. As you do so, beware of any discrepancies between the units in the text and the units in the data. For example, the question may concern the occurrence of some incident each week, but the data may involve the occurrence of some incident each day. This is a common trap on the GRE. Finally, once you fully understand the question, your next step is to check the answer choices before performing any calculations. There are two reasons for this. First, the answer choices will indicate the correct form of the answer. For example, if the question asks you to find a certain probability, the answer choices can be expressed either as decimals or as fractions. So if you don't know the correct form of the answer, you might unwittingly perform more calculations than are necessary. Now the bigger reason for checking the answer choices first is that the answer choices will indicate the degree of accuracy required. For example, in this question, answer choices that are very spread apart, like this, suggest that you can be very aggressive in your estimation. Conversely, answer choices that are tightly packed together might require you to be more precise in your calculations. So you won't know how accurate you need to be unless you check the answer choices first. Okay, so that's the general strategy for tackling data interpretation questions. Now let's examine some additional tips to consider. The first tip is estimate whenever possible. Remember that the GRE test makers are not interested in your ability to perform tedious calculations. And in most cases, the answer choices will allow for estimation and rounding. So don't automatically assume that you need to use the on-screen calculator for a question. The next tip involves an important feature of data interpretation questions. That is, the visual graphics, such as bar graphs, circle graphs, and line graphs, are always drawn to scale. So in many cases, you can visually estimate or compare the data values. The next tip to consider is, be sure not to confuse numbers with rates or percents. This is also a common trap on the GRE. So for example, if company A here experienced the greatest percent increase in revenue, this does not necessarily mean that company A also experienced the greatest dollar increase in revenue. Okay, that concludes these tips. Let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned the strategy for tackling data interpretation questions, and we learned some additional tips to consider.